This is going to be a detailed walkthrough of how we classify the site series of a field site using the BEC system or the Biogeoclimatic Ecosystem Classification System. I'm going to be going through quite a few different steps, so to make it easier to follow along I'm going to break this up into different video segments. So first I'll talk about determining the biogeoclimatic unit, and then we'll move into environmental analysis, doing the soil moisture regime and then the soil nutrient regime. Next, vegetation analysis using indicator plants and then summary tables. Then putting it all together to figure out what the site series of our location is. And then lastly, once we've figured out that site series, what can we do with it? Let's begin by figuring out the biogeoclimatic unit of the area we're going to sample. Here's a photo of the study site we're going to classify. So the first thing that we would do is get our field guide, so in this case it's the field guide 28 for the Vancouver forest region, and we'll use this and maps that we can find online to locate the area on the biogeoclimatic map and get a tentative ID for the biogeoclimatic subzone and variant if applicable. So here's a big overview map, we don't see a lot of detail at this scale, but if we look a little bit more closely in the field guide we have a topographic profile so we can look at this topographic profile to get some idea of which subzone and variant we might be in, though we probably won't be able to figure it out precisely. Here's a detailed map of our general study area around Vancouver, and there's our study site, the, the star with the red circle. You can see in the area around our study site there's three different subzones or variants. The dark green color is CWHVM1, the paler green color is CWHDM, and the yellow green color is CWHVM2. So if we zoom in a little bit closer, those two different green colors are a little bit easier to tell apart, and we can see clearly that we're in CWHVM1. So our tentative biogeoclimatic zone is CWHVM1, or the Submontane Very Wet Maritime Coastal Western Hemlock variant. But potential alternatives nearby are CWHVM2 or CWHDM. So we want to keep in mind that it's possible, if we're on the boundary between regions, that we might actually be in one of those other subzones or variants. And then we also want to think about where we are in the elevation profile. So here we're going to be kind of on a mid-slope position, so probably colluvial or moranal parent material. Colluvial is material that's been deposited by erosion. Moranal is a glacial deposit. So possible site series are probably one, four, five, or six, maybe a few others, but that gives us an idea of where we think we might be headed. And as we walk to the site, we should be keeping an eye on the vegetation. We don't have to do a formal survey, but we should keep tabs on which species we're seeing and relative abundances, because then we can look up in the field guide the descriptions of the vegetation for the different subzones and variants to confirm if it seems like our tentative classification is correct. So we'll look at this vegetation on zonal and azonal sites once we get to the site. We'll note our elevation and then look at the descriptions of the subzones and variants in the field guide to verify the tentative subzone or variant ID that we have. And if it doesn't match what we're expecting, we should determine if the area is transitional between two subzones or variants. And we should focus on what we're seeing in the field and go by that rather than the map that we have. And if the area is transitional, not quite in one or the other, we should use both edotopic grids for our analysis. So here's the tentative variant again, and note that the elevation for this variant goes from sea level to 650 meters. That CWHVM2 variant is a little bit higher in elevation, so it's 650 to 1000 meters. So that should hopefully give us a hint about which one we're in. And as far as vegetation differences, that variant has more mountain hemlock and yellow cedar than our tentative variant. The other alternative subzone, the dry maritime coastal western hemlock subzone, also has about the same elevational range, so that won't help us separate it from our tentative classification. But note that an amabilis fir and Alaskan blueberry are rare in that subzone. So if we look at our field guide, we can find a table like this that compares a number of different uh, subzones and variants and shows relative frequency that different plant species are found there. So there you see the column headers are the different variants. There were a few pages here, so I pulled out the, the two CWHVM variants and then the CWHDM to compare. So these tables list plant species, and those bars show the frequency with which we would expect to find those different plant species in those units. So in our case, we've measured the elevation of our study site, it's 350 meters, so we can eliminate that higher elevation variant. And we look around at the vegetation, we don't see much Douglas fir, we see lots of amabilis fir, and no Alaskan blueberry, so that allows us to eliminate CWHDM. 
So we confirm the biogeoclimatic unit as CWHVM1. So now that we've identified our subzone invariant, there's a couple of steps to try to figure out what our site series is. First, we'll do an environmental analysis, looking at the site characteristics, things like soil, slope position, etc. And then we'll do a vegetation analysis, looking at indicator plants, so a quantitative approach. And then we'll do another vegetation approach, looking at summary tables, which is a more qualitative approach. So let's start with the environmental analysis.